Hey everyone, Mr. Mase here. This is God for round 28 of the Nations Cup. Let's get this started. Break just before the curb on the right starts. Brake hard for a moment, slowly ease off of the brakes and get on the curbs to help the car rotate. Carefully accelerate your way out. Now you're going to want to bring yourself to the right side of the track and get ready to navigate through the chicane of death. So look for this curb that starts on the right. You want to ease off the throttle and start to turn in when you reach the start of the curb. Just be very careful through here and you can slowly start to apply just a little bit of throttle until you're out of the chicane. Just try not to hit the wall so you don't lose any speed. Then bring yourself to the right and brake just before the curb on the right starts. Brake hard for a moment. Very slowly ease off of the brakes so the car can start to rotate and then carefully start to accelerate. Bring yourself to the left side of the track and all you have to do here is just ease off of the throttle. You're going to do the same thing for this turn. Ease off of the throttle, use a little bit of braking if needed and the same goes for this right turn. Now you want to bring yourself to the right side of the track and brake just as you pass the 100 meter sign. Get into the curb that is on the inside part of the track and carefully accelerate. Go full throttle through here. Bring yourself to the right and brake just after the curb on the right starts. Brake hard for a short moment. Quickly start to ease off of the brakes and get on the curb on the left to help the car rotate. Do a little bit of throttle control. Just get the car to rotate so it is pointing towards the main straight and start to fully accelerate. We'll go ahead and finish this lap and then we'll go ahead and try to quickly talk about the strategies. For this qualifying session, you're going to have 10 minutes to try to get a good qualifying time. So since we are on Dragon Troll Seaside, you're going to have many high speed sections here. So Slipstream is going to be valuable here. You want to try to get within three quarters of a second behind someone as you start your flying lap. So you can try to get that good old Slipstream benefits. It's going to be even more important since that Slipstream is a little bit stronger than what it was before. The thing that you do want to watch out for is the chicane of death since it's going to be claiming some souls on the race day. You do have to be careful with the tires, especially on your outlap. So once you do your race or if you start pushing it from the moment you get out of the pit stop, you're going to notice at least on the Supra that the tires start to show signs of wear as soon as you're about to approach the final chicane on this reverse layout. So you do want to be a little careful as you do your outlap. That way your tires are on its best conditions as you start your flying lap. And you only want to do one lap before you do the jump out and jump back in strategy. So what you do, you complete your lap, you get your time in, you press options, exit, and then you go ahead and enter the course right away. On the FIA race, so the actual race, it should be enter qualifying. So it's basically the same thing as if you were doing it here in the lobbies. And the good thing about doing this strategy is that it saves you from doing an in lap and doing all that pit stop animation sequence. You just spawn back at the pit stop. You go out right away. You already have a fresh set of racing medium tires and all you have to do is just your out lap and then you do another uh, flying lap and you rinse and repeat until there's no more time left. For the race strategy, it's going to be a little complicated. So let's get the most obvious parts out of the way. The first one being that you need to make sure you don't hit the chicken of death because that will essentially make your race a nightmare. But two, you do need to use racing medium and hard tires to make sure that you do not get the one minute penalty that gets applied after the race ends. This is a power track so you need a high speed car or a high acceleration car that has decent speed to be competitive here. As for the tire strategies, I tested the one stop, the two stop, 
and a three stop. All these strategies were tested with the GR Super Racing concept since that's the car that I performed the best with and since that is a car that I used it for the time trial. So when it comes to the racing medium tires on the GR Super Racing concept, they are good for about 7 laps before they start to drop off. And by that I mean that the times start to drop off and it sort of starts to bleed into the times that you would normally get with the racing hard tires. So with the one stop on the Supra, I did 9 laps on the racing medium tires and 11 laps on the racing hard tires. And I'm not going to suggest this strategy uh, because one, you're on the racing hard tires for more than half of the race. Two, the racing hard tires will get worn out towards the end of the race. So that is going to become a problem, a big problem because one, Racing hard tires don't have that much grip to begin with. Two, worn racing hard tires is going to be a nightmare to deal with, especially as you exit the corners on this car. And with the racing hard tires, you're going to have to be on the defensive. So if you're racing with those during the two or three stop, they're most likely going to be on the racing meme tires and you're going to have to defend your position from them before they pull a sneaky and end up overtaking you. The only upside to this is that you're only doing one stop, so it is possible to potentially just hang out right behind someone, get the slipstream toe, and just end up following them until they do the pit stop and end up overtaking them without having to do any extra effort yourself. But once again, the one stop strategy is not going to be the strategy that I would recommend using. The strategies that will be more viable here will be the two and the three stop. With the three stop, you can use it on cars or driving styles that are a bit harsh on the racing medium tires or just on tires in general. So in this strategy, you can do six laps of racing medium tires and just repeat that three times. And then you can do the last couple of laps on the racing hard tires. On your third racing medium stint, it is possible to extend that just a little bit because you would have used a lot of fuel by now, so the tire wear will be a little bit a little bit better by then. So it is possible to do six laps of racing medium tires, another six laps of racing medium tires, seven laps of racing medium tires, and then just one lap on the racing hard tires. So while this does make tire wear a little bit less of an issue, there are a couple of downsides to this and some of those downsides are that one you're spending more time on the pit stop even though the pit stop time is pretty short here so with the extended pit stop time you do risk getting passed by someone who is doing say the two stop and if you do the three stop you do risk pitting out into traffic so this is something that you'll have to be a little more mindful about because if you decide to pit when there's a big group of cars not too far behind you, you risk pitting out into that big group of cars and you're going to have to fight with them and that's going to slow you down a little bit more. And finally with the two stop, this one is looking like it'll be the go-to strategy for this race. When you want to pit, will depend on the car that you are using. So if you're in a uh, car that has heavy tire wear like the Supra, you can pit around lap eight and then do another eight laps on the racing medium tires. And then you go ahead and finish the rest of the race with the racing hard tires. With other cars like the Nissan GTR and the Aston Martin Vantage, uh, they're a bit better on the tires so they can do uh, nine laps on the racing medium tires, 10 laps on the racing medium tires, and then just one lap on the racing hard tires. But since we're talking about the cars now, let's go ahead and quickly talk about them. So the GR Super Racing concept, this is going to be one of the meta cars for this race. It has incredible pace over on the track. And of course, on the time trial, it is one of the better cars here. Not the McLaren because that car is uh, that car is terrible to drive. But anyways, uh, the GR Super Racing concept it has good pace around here, good acceleration. It's pretty stable, 
but it is a little bit on the understeering side and this car does have heavy tire wear so you will have to pit a little bit earlier than the other cars so that is something that you will have to worry about luckily you do not have to worry about fuel at all however this is one of those weird cars where you do have to shift at a certain point because once you go past that point you start to lose power so for the supra you have to shift when the bar on the bottom of the screen is at around 75 percent full go any more past that and you're starting to lose power which will slow you down the next car that we'll quickly take a look at is the nissan gtr so this car packs a punch with its power so it's going to be able to quickly get out of the turns so this car has incredible acceleration this car is actually pretty good with tire wear so it will be able to do nine laps on racing moon tires another nine or even ten laps on racing moon tires and then depending on what you do with the second stint you just do one or two laps on racing hard tires and this car also has pretty good speed so it will be able to hold on its own when you're going through the main straight However, there are a couple problems with this car, one of them being that this car is a brick. So this car doesn't really know how to turn, so you have to bring the brake balance all the way to the back of the car just to try to get this thing to rotate around a turn as you're slowing down. And it's going to present a big issue when you go through the Chicana Death. So you have to be extra careful with this car as you go through it because if you turn in too early or you turn in too late, that's it. The car is not going to want to turn anymore and you're going to hit the chicane of death. And the other negative thing about this car is that when the tires start to wear out, the car is going to want to oversteer a bit more. So you do have to be careful with how much throttle you put into the car as you exit a turn while the, while the tires are wearing out. So with this car, you have to drive it in a particular way to get the most out of it while making sure that this thing, well, turns. And before I forget, this car does not need to fuel save at all. All you have to do is just rev the heck out of the car to try to get the most power out of it. And finally, the last car that we'll quickly talk about is the Aston Martin V12 Vantage. So I like to think of this car as somewhere of a in-between between the Supra and the GTR. So this car does have quite a bit of power, so it will be able to quickly exit out of corners. However, it does have a little bit of that oversteering tendency as you exit low speed turns, so you do want to be a bit mindful of that. It does also have good tire wear, and overall it does feel like a stable ride, just like the Supra. So if you're looking for something that's a bit of an in-between between the Supra and the GTR definitely take a look at this car the other thing that I do need to mention which is going to be extremely important is that with the Aston Martin Vantage you do need to shift at a certain point so this car isn't exactly the friendliest when it comes to fuel economy you have to shift right before the bar on the bottom of the screen fills up so as long as you shift there, you don't let the car rev out too much, you should be fine when it comes to fuel. And this car also feels pretty good when it comes to going through the chicken of death. So, well, that's something nice to know. But anyways, uh, this car can also do the two stop just like the Nissan GTR. It can go up to 10 laps on the racing medium tires. So a two stop is definitely a go to choice for this car. And once again, if the tire wear is a bit of an issue for you for one reason or another, whether it's with this car or the Supra or the GTR or any other car that you end up going with for this race, you can definitely use the three stop and just have that in your mind. So if you need it, then you'll know what to do. But other than that, me personally, I would go with the two stop if possible. So these are just some of the cars that I've taken a look at, some of the more notable cars for better reasons, just listing out the pros and cons of each car. And we did talk about the tire strategy, so let's try to sum all of this up into something quick. 
So the two stop and the three stop are the most viable strategies. If your tire wear is pretty heavy for one reason or another, you can definitely go with the three stop. Just be aware that you might be pitting out into traffic and might have to fight with them. Other than that, if you're able to take good care of your tires, then it is possible to go with the two stop. The cars that I tested and that are notable in good ways are the Nissan GTR, the GR Super Racing Concept, and the Aston Martin Vantage. The Supra is one of the meta cars for this track, except it has heavy tire wear. With the Nissan GTR, it has incredible acceleration coming out of turns, so you can definitely fly out of those turns. However, this car is a bit of a brick, so it is difficult to turn with this car. And when there's tire wear on the rear tires, the chance of oversteering goes up. And with the ASMR Vantage V12, in my opinion, it's a bit of an in-between between the Supra and the GTR. But the thing is that you do have to do a little bit of short shifting. So shifting right before the bar fills up. That way you do not have to refuel at all. Uh, I do want to note before I sign off that there are other cars that could have potential for this race. Like the Beetle, the Viper. Those are just a couple of the cars that will have potential for this race. Just that I couldn't get to testing them because I was already testing quite a few other things like the two stop, three stop, and a couple cars. And with this race being 33 and a half minutes long, yeah, that's going to take a while. <laughs> but anyways, hopefully this guide helps you out. Hopefully it helps you decide on a car that you want to use or decide on the pit strategy that you want to use. Good luck in your races. This is Mr. MCA. Try not to hit the chicken of death, and I'll see you in the next video.